Hi, my name's Camel and I'm with Collier County Pollution Control. And today I have my friend Sammy here with me today. And we're actually gonna work with this watershed model today. Uh, do you know what a watershed is, Sammy? No. A watershed is an area of land that all of the water collected goes to one location. So we're gonna try and use this model to understand where pollution comes from. Okay. Uh, you know what pollution is, right? Yeah. Pollution is anything in our neighborhood that can hurt or harm us or the creatures that live there. So, do you see any pollution on our model already? We've got some plastic in the water, a soda can, a net. Good. So, that net could have come from one of these boats. If the net was safely held on the boat when they were um, going through the channel, it wouldn't be a problem, right? Right. But at the moment that the net flies out into the water body and has the potential to hurt one of the creatures there, then it becomes pollution. So I'm, just take a minute to look at the model. Uh, do you see some things on here that look like your neighborhood? Yeah. We've got some dogs here, a school bus, some vehicles. My neighbor has a boat on the trailer. What about some of the buildings? What do you think the buildings are? Oh, maybe... A home and an apartment building. Good. Um, a farm over here? Yep, this is a farmhouse, right? This could be maybe a resort like downtown okay. next to the golf course. This could be a factory possibly. Oh. So yeah, there's different things on the model that should look like our, our neighborhoods. This is a marina over here and a port. So we're gonna look at some of the different features on here. Um, the gas station, did you know that the gas is actually contained underneath the ground at the gas tank? Yeah. Yeah, so here's our little gas tanks and it, it's underneath the ground, but we can have problems with that if there's any leaking from these tanks. It can end up contaminating our drinking water. Oh. Did you know that 96% of our water supplies and our drinking water comes from the ground here in Collier County? No. That seems like a high amount, right? Wow. So yeah, in Collier County, 96% of our drinking water comes from groundwater supplies. So we make sure that these locations don't leak in any way or they could end up contaminating our water. By any chance, do you have a well at your house? I do, actually. You do? Okay, so over here, this little squirt bottle actually represents a well at our own home. So this is our house over here. And this house actually has a, something special that's not uh, in every single home situation, but it's a septic tank. Do you I've have a got, septic tank? I sure do. Okay, cool. So this septic tank actually is um, fairly realistic. It's hooked up to your toilets and your sinks and, and your washers and dishwashers in your home. And all of the gray water from your house ends up going into those, those tanks. So if the septic tank leaks or isn't being well maintained, do you think that that could be a problem for our neighborhood? Yes. Yeah. It actually can. So if those t tanks aren't well maintained, you can have problems with our groundwater supplies. And if you have a well at your house, do you think that could actually get into your well and affect your drinking water? I guess so. Yeah, it could. So we're actually going to uh, go ahead and pollute this model just this one day only so that we can see where pollution comes from and try to understand how, how to prevent it in our own neighborhoods. Models are really good for us to do that. Models are a small representation to understand a really large concept that we can't understand easily. So let's think about different types of pollution. We talked about the net and mm -hmm. the plastics that are in the water body, but what other types of pollution do you think could affect our neighborhoods? I guess my vehicle, as yeah. I'm doing gas or not getting an oil change. Perfect. So let's go ahead and add some gasoline to, our, to all of our vehicles. So our boats, our buses, our cars. What about the tractor? Does the tractor use gas? Yeah. Yep, gas and oil for all of them. Oh, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of gasoline and some oil. Good, and we can kind of see the gas is already leaking out of our boat over there. Normally pollution isn't something that we, you know, uh, deposit right into a water body, but every once in a while, you know, a boat might not be maintained properly and it can end up leaking right in, in our backyards. Okay, so let's think about dirt. Is dirt pollution? No, it's in my backyard. Right. If it's safely contained underneath the turf or underneath a tree and it's not mobilized into our water, then it's not pollution. Okay. But if it gets into our water bodies or into our streets from, a, like, let's say, a construction site, do you see that that could be a problem? Yeah, that water just looks nasty. Yeah, so let's add a little bit of sand or, okay. or dirt to our model, too. What about our farm? Do you think that... Our farm actually can have a lot of dirt and sediment too. 
Yeah, the plants need it. Yeah, so we'll add some to our construction site over here and some to the farm over there. Do you see on the construction site we have this little uh, modeling clay in this corner? Mm -hmm. Well, this modeling clay we're using to represent that, that it's actually a silt fence or a berm in a construction site. Whenever you're passing an active construction site, do you see those black uh, wet net fences that go all along the bottom of the construction site? Yeah, along the six foot chain link. Yeah, they, okay. sometimes they're next to the, the chain link fence, but they're a, a, either a black or a green uh, fabric fence that will surround the construction site. They're actually required to do that so that none of the loose dirt and the construction site can get into the street or a local water body. Okay. Okay, so that's dirt. What about cigarette butts? Do we see cigarette butts all over the mm, place sometimes? Way too many. Yeah. Do you think that the chemicals from those could actually get out in a rain event? Yeah, so let's go ahead and add some cigarette butts to our model too. Let's think about our trees. What kind of pollution can come from our trees and plants? I guess I had fertilizer. Yeah, or even dead leaves and branches. Those kinds of things all add nutrients to our water bodies if they're allowed to get into the streets or into our stormwater system. So let's go ahead and add some fertilizer. So fertilizer is like nutrients for our trees, but fertilizer is, it's very important that it's only added in the amount that the trees and the, and the turf can actually use. If you add too much and the plants can't uptake those additional nutrients, it's just like a vitamin for our body and it, it will be lost, um, in this case, in the next rain event. So yeah, the golf course, great. All right, so that's our, our leaves or fertilizer. What about pesticides? Do you ever see chemicals that are used outdoors for treating bugs? And I do. I keep ants out of my house. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit more red for that. Great. One more thing I want to mention is dogs. Do you have a dog? I actually have two. Ooh. Do you clean up after your dog? When we're out walking all the time. Do you clean up after your dog in your backyard? Not so much. No. It's actually required by Collier County Ordinance that you actually clean up after your dog in your backyards too. So let's go ahead and add a little bit. I'll just give you the shaker for this. So we've got a German Shepherd over here. What about our farm field? Oh, I guess cows would have some poo lotion as well. Good. Okay, so what do you think is gonna happen when rain falls on our watershed? Mm -mm. You said it's all gonna drain to one location. Yep, and we've got pipes over here that are storm drains. Have you ever seen the culverts and in the, in the inlets that are all along the streets? Yes. Did you know that only clean rainwater is supposed to be transported through those pipes? No. And that none of those pipes get treated? Okay. They actually are all connected through a chain of different pipes and structures and end up going out to a canal or a, or a water body. With no treatment? With no treatment. Okay. Over here we see the wastewater treatment plant. All of the water from our wastewater um, actually goes into plants like that for, for cleaning. Unlike the septic tank that we have over here, you know, the, um, the contaminants actually go into the tank on site. But if you have actual sewer, then it'll go into a plant where that'll get treated. But as far as the stormwater pipes, that is just untreated water that ends up going to a lake, canal, or some other water body. All right, would you like to add some rain to the model? Sure. Okay, let's add some rain. Rain doesn't usually happen all across the landscape at one time. So we'll look and see what happens over here in our farm field. Great. So you can see that the different colors that represented gas and oil, and we have pollution over there too. You can see how it's filling up into the low area. Do you have any idea what that low area is? Is that a wetland? It is, it's a wetland. So wetlands are really important for lots of reasons, not just because the trees give us oxygen, but also because the pollution actually uh, sinks into those low areas and, and wetlands are like sponges that will actually use up that, those additional nutrients before uh, it the water goes off into a local water body. So it essentially cleans the water before it runs off of those areas. So that's another uh, important reason for us to have wetlands. If water fa falls on the area over here where we have the construction site, 
you can see that it stays if we have this silt fence or berm in yeah, place. Yeah, there's water coming out, but not the dirt. Right, exactly. But if we lose this berm or there's some type of breach in the, that silt fence, do you see how the dirt can slowly start leaching out into the streets? Oh yeah, you've got a nice little group of it right there. Right. So construction sites are actually required to keep that from happening. So if you ever see anything like that, you should always call pollution control and make sure that it's cleaned up properly. Okay, what about pollution or water across the entire landscape? Should we go ahead and see what happens if we add a lot of water to this model? Okay, midsummer rain, here we go. <laughs> can see the water body starting to turn different colors. So do you think that all that additional runoff of nutrients and pollutants can contribute to some of our water quality problems? Yes. Definitely. Okay. Now what major rain event did we have last year? Well, Lots of wind and a bit of rain with Hurricane Irma. Yep. So should we see whether the hurricane changes the landscape a bit? Okay. You can see how the additional flow of water actually um, carries a lot more pollutants to the local water bodies. And you can see how things actually get stuck in the storm drains too. Mm -hmm. We had some flooding after Hurricane Irma. What's this over here? That, that's a collection tank or some type of you know inlet or structure that would hold water for a certain amount of time, but then uh, in flooding uh, situations, it could overflow out into uh, the nearest water body or a beach or a lake. Okay. So. Thinking about the model and all the stuff we've talked about, is there anything that you can think of that we can do to, to help protect our neighborhood from pollutants that we've talked about today? I guess I would maintain my car, making sure I got regular oil changes, had the nozzle all the way in my car before I actually filled up the gas. Okay. I guess I'll start picking up after my dogs every now and then Great. or all the time. Um, keep an eye on these silt fences. I guess you said I can call pollution control if I see an issue? Yes. Okay. And what about, what about our house and our septic tank? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I have to get that checked every couple of years just to make sure that it's still operating the way it should. Right, every three to five years is actually the recommendation for um, maintaining or checking your septic tank. Okay. What about fertilizer? Oh. And feeding our plants? I guess just like with my body, I only take one or two vitamins per day, so just making sure I measure how many how much fertilizer I apply before applying it so that the plants get the nutrients they need. Exactly. Reading the label and calibrating the spreaders and your, and your equipment so that you're only applying exactly what the turf and the landscape needs and not giving them anything additional. Otherwise, it can end up in the, in the nearest water body. Okay, we talked about chemicals like pesticides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing there. Just watch, make sure you read the labels and, and make, only use exactly what you need. So you can see the sea creatures over here that are in our, uh, in our beach or our ocean. You can see how they could get stressed as all of this additional pollutants are, end up in our local water bodies like the Gulf of Mexico. So protecting the, the other sea creatures from all the additional nutrients and the runoff is really key. All right, so thank you for participating in the watershed lesson today, Sammy. Yeah, thank you. I felt like I really learned a lot. We saw how all of our actions on land really do impact our water as well as our drinking water. Exactly. So it's important for us to live green, safe, blue.